everyone, my name is Alan Huban here and we are currently at the Audacious Christ Centered Educational Catholic Institution in the Anbantayan, which is Academia de San Martin. And fun fact, I used to study here during my junior and senior high school years. And today, we are going to be interviewing one English teacher in this institution and ask her about um, instructional materials and how does she adapt and implement her instructional materials in her classroom. Para na! Today we have Ms. Zaira Therese Mitzel here. So, good morning, Ms. Kennedy. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us about yourself? How do you 
ensure that adapted materials stay aligned with the main goals of your language curriculum. Okay, so I usually check the curriculum, especially um, I think in 2026 there will be a sudden change or a big change because of the feedback curriculum. And we're currently working on, on it and we're checking all the curriculums. And with checking with the curriculums and also checking with our principal and the other English teachers, we're collaborating in case on how we can integrate the curriculum and stay on the materials. So we're currently working in it. And on my part, I usually do research more. So every day I'm learning and we are all learning. I'm learning from the students. I'm, I'm learning from them also. And then what I do is I just search more so that I'll be more knowledgeable on the materials that I'll use. How do you measure if the adaptive materials are helping students improve their language skills effectively? Okay, so every doctor in the topic we have this um, performance test. So it's not just a reading test, so it's a performance test. So I would usually um, assess on how on their language skills or their communication skills because nowadays it's, it's a instruction, collaborative learning, like um, group activity, 
activities so that our students can really showcase what certain potential or skills they have as a student. Okay. So, next is, what challenges do you face when changing materials for your classes? And how do you keep students interested in your class? Well, in my part as a teacher, it is really the resources and the learning environment as well because nowadays, once the student loses their interest or their motivation to focus on studying, they will not really pay attention. But in my case, we see to it that all of the strategies that we provide are in the gym at the same time interactive so that our students can really focus and can really pay attention to all of the activities that we provide. And nowadays, since we are very uh, tech savvy, so we cannot really apply certain activities that provide technological um, aspects because in my case, it is English. So in English, it is merely most on communication, speaking. So therefore, the activities that we provide is using or having delivering speeches, like uh, providing uh, group speeches or like speech choir, so oratorical speeches so that they can really um, develop or enhance their speaking and at the same time communication skills. It is crucial for the students at a early age to communicate effectively with their peers and with their advisors. Yes, and in addition to that, um, I just have this um, notion with my students that they really hate English because according to them, English is difficult, same wise with mathematics. So in my part, I agree with that because I hate mathematics. mathematics. I, do. Okay. I hate mathematics and in my students, I always encourage them that English is not difficult. It's only in their mind that since they already interpret English as a difficult subject, so that's why they are hesitant to use and to speak the language. But along the way, as you keep on motivating them, talking to them in English, and I try to encourage them as much as possible that when you talk to your classmates or friends, try to speak even just a smart, slight English language so that you can enhance slowly and slowly. We all know that English is the lingua franca of the world. It is for us to be able to communicate with the other nationalities. Yes, it's very universal. So whether you like it or not, when you find a job or when you become a professional in the future, you need to learn and adapt to English. So for the third question, how do you choose extra resources to make lessons more practical and help students think critically? Okay, so since speaking of resources, no, so that is one of the problems. So in my part, I always do advice researching, uh, printing other learning materials that are not available in the school. So nowadays in our school, we have English books, but some books are not aligned with the expected competency that we are targeting to that certain lesson. So therefore, Thank you. 
question. Okay. We are close to the last question. <laughs> How <Not> ready? <laughs> Not Feeling ready. Aside. How do you ensure that adaptive materials stay aligned with the main goals of your language curriculum? Okay, with that, we just make sure that before we teach the lesson, we are already prepared with what different activities we're going to Thank you so much, Mia. Okay, you're welcome. I hope I was able to share something that would be beneficial for your education. Thank you so much. That would be all. Thank you. So joining joining us today, we have Miss Angel Mandawi. So Miss Angel Mandawi, can you tell us about yourself? Okay, so my name is Angel or such as differentiated instructions in which I am dealing with different uh, qualities of students. So by that uh, particular strategies that I make, I can assess my students on how they are going to deal with that differentiated activities that I give to them. It's also great, and a great strategy for us teachers to um, determine the behavior of your students for you to um, also know where and what to aid your students' needs. 
So for the second question, what challenges do you face when changing materials for your classes? And how do you keep students in Okay, so uh, first is the problems uh, of the moment that I change materials. So the problems that I am uh, currently facing right now is the moment that I give different materials to them, they are going to make uh, certain answers to my questions or to my activities that is not really intended for them to do. Like, they find difficulties on those materials that I gave to them. So, the interventions that I make is that I will give them differentiated materials or instructions in which I can meet their needs. So, by that, uh, by that solution, I can assess my students on how they will answer that question or how they will uh, answer that activities. So, based on how I going to, to uh, give those activities to them. So, for your third question, how do you choose extra resources to make lessons more practical and help students take care of Okay, so, um, extra resources such as examples okay so uh, for example is current issues okay i will give them an issue or a problem that happens currently so that by giving it to them they can uh, think critically on how to address those certain issues which is very related to, to this time issue so by that uh, by that simple uh, strategy or interventions that i gave to my class i can assess them that how they can uh, answer or how they are going to have the solution to that problem based on the real experiences which they are going to experience. For the fourth question, how do you ensure that adaptive materials stay aligned with the main goals of your language curriculum? Okay, I'm sorry, pardon. Can you repeat those questions? Okay, so, how do you ensure that adapted materials stay aligned with the main goals of your language curriculum? Okay, so, um, we have competencies to follow. So, that's, uh, by the moment that we deliver our lesson, we will, uh, we are going to know first what competencies do, do we apply. What competencies do I teach to them? And what type of lessons do I teach to them? So, so that's why, I, uh, so the reason I can have those certain materials that uh, I'm going to use on them, which is aligned on the certain competencies. So for the last question, how do you measure if the adaptive materials are helping students improve their language skills effectively? Okay, again, how do you measure if the adapted materials are helping students improve their language skills Okay, so by um, certain example is by reporting. So through reporting, I can assess my students that they get the instructions that I give to them and also by assessing their outputs and also by um, assessing their learnings through oral, through written and reflections to the writings that I gave to them. So by that, I can surely assess, I, I, I can surely um, I know that my learners are truly learning by uh, checking their, uh, how, they, how they reflect on the activities that I gave to them, how they answer the questions that I gave to them. It's important to um, assess the learnings of the students, whether they can retain the knowledge and, uh, from your that would be all. Ms. Mandawi, thank you so much for uh, participating in the interview today. Hopefully that it could uh, give you a great help. It did great. It did give me a good, a very great help because I have learned so much from you and from the past teachers that I have interviewed earlier. So thank you so much. There you have it. Thank you to our three respective English teachers for sharing their insights on how to adapt and implement language learning materials more effectively for the students to be able to comprehend our topics. That is all. Bye-bye.